Hello! In the previous video, we defined derivatives and went through this example, but we didn't really talk about different types of derivatives. Let's do so in the current video. Before we start, I want to make it clear that this video is simply an overview on the different types of derivatives. In subsequent videos, we will explore many more aspects of derivatives, as well as revisit what is mentioned over here and see things in more detail. After that note, let's start from the top two, forwards and futures. The reason I mentioned them together is because although these two do have some differences, they are conceptually the same thing. They are just contracts for delayed delivery, for delivery of an asset, say gold for example, in the future. Their main difference is that forwards are private contracts between two parties. They trade in what is called the over-the-counter market and commonly known by its initials as OTC. To give you an idea, imagine a trader working for JP Morgan Chase who wants to buy 300 ounces of gold in 3 months time for $1,000 per ounce. Also imagine a trader working for Citigroup who is willing to sell that quantity of gold at the same price in 3 months. So if the two were to bind themselves in a contract, with the JP Morgan trader agreeing to buy and the Citigroup trader agreeing to sell, then that contract would be an example of a forward contract. Now futures on the other hand, although still contracts for future delivery, they are traded on exchanges. One example is the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So if we were to go back to the gold example, if that transaction had taken place through an exchange instead of the two parties privately getting together in a contract, then that would be an example of a futures contract instead of a forward. Of course, the fact that futures are exchange traded gives rise to other considerations that we will see as we progress. Moving on to a third type of derivative, swaps, you can view this as equivalent to a series of forward contracts. Wait a minute. Didn't we say that forwards and futures are conceptually the same thing? Then why did I specifically say that you can view this as a series of forwards? The reason is because swaps are mostly traded over the counter as private contracts between two parties, as was the case with forward contracts. Now as regards our final derivative instrument, options, for the time being, let's suffice it to say that these are contracts giving their holder the right to take a certain action, to either buy or sell, and that options are mostly traded on exchanges. One example being the Chicago Board Options Exchange. The fact that options give their holder the right, but not the obligation to take a certain action, makes it clear why they are called options, but it's also the factor that mainly differentiates them from the other three types of derivatives. In the case of forwards, futures and swaps, the holder has an obligation, has a commitment to perform some action, to either buy or sell, depending on her position, at a certain price. Whereas in the case of options, the holder has the right, but not the obligation. At this point, I'd like to say that there are other types of derivatives as well. These four are just what might be considered as the basic ones. Other types of derivatives include what might collectively be referred to as exotic derivatives. And if I were to make a general comment on exotic ones, then that would be that these are a lot more complex in nature than basic derivatives. Now going back to the example we went through in the previous video, I'd like to leave you with a question. Based on the discussion we had on the four basic derivative instruments, what type of derivative do you think this is? If you find it difficult to answer, don't worry, we'll tackle this together as well in the following video.